Hi everyone, uh, today I'm going to look at a couple of SGI O2s. Um, these are basically the next revision of the sort of cheap workstations that Silicon Graphics made. Uh, these machines I think came out about 98. Um, they're quite a bit different, the architecture in these is quite different from the Indies. Um, they have shared memory, so both the system and the graphics card shares the same memory. Uh, this is a great benefit for doing any textured 3D graphics because one, you don't have to copy the texture from the system RAM to the graphics texture memory, but it also means that you inherently get as much texture memory as you have free RAM. So compared to the Indies that are not great with texture, the O2s are much quicker. So that's really their biggest benefit. Um, they're a bit more modern, they've got a 100 megabit network, um, CD-ROM drives built in. Unfortunately the CD-ROM drives are surprisingly unreliable. Um, the, these machines are more fragile than the uh, Indies. Uh, the cases are all fairly plasticky and, and do break. Um, these two are actually in very good condition. Um, so on the left here you can see uh, you get video and audio. Um, the lower end models don't have um, I think some of the component or composite video out if I remember correctly. Um, but they're pretty cool because to upgrade that module you basically let's turn one of these around. This particular one here is an R5000. This one around as well. Right, so, this is the R5000 and this is the 10,000. You can also get, uh, I think, an R12000 model as well, but that's much more recent and more expensive. Both of them do usually have this plastic back on it, but that often falls off. Um, so, you can see we've got again SCSI. Normal VGA, 100 megabit Ethernet this time, um, serial and uh, your PS2 ports. Uh, the cool thing about these is they're really very modular. So the video audio module just slides out. Um, so you can easily upgrade that. And then the other two bays on the R5000 are for hard disks. So you just slide out and you've got newer style uh, SCSI hard disk. The R10,000 motherboard is a little bit different because it only has one drive bay because the actual heatsink and fan assembly is much bigger on the motherboard. Um, so you can't directly swap the motherboards between them. Um, people have hacked up the internals and that works. Um, so, and the motherboard also comes out as well. Uh, weird proprietary RAM, which I suppose is the requirement of the shared graphics texture memory. You've got a PCI X slot, not PCI Express. Um, and then over this side, is uh, where the CPU sits under here. Um, lighting is a bit. So this particular model is an R5000. It's a 200 megahertz one. I think this one has the one meg cache. That's so quite a nice R5000 O2 model. Uh, this one's an R10,000, and it is a 175 megahertz one, which is the lowest speed 10,000. And supposedly they have some issues. The 175 and uh, 195 models I think have some latency issues or something that means the video playback is not as great. I haven't personally seen it, but I haven't really tested that much. So as you can see, the actual riser of the two is quite a bit different. Uh, and that's why you can only fit one hard drive in the R10,000 model. Um, and also why you can't easily swap the motherboards. 
um, probably a 5,000 could go into a 10,000, but not vice versa without doing some, some hacking. And then in the back, you, well, you can see the connectors. So, um, I believe the 10,000 I've got fairly maxed out with RAM, but I'm going to show you, I think the 5,000 is working. So, actually, no, I think the 10,000 is working. And make sure you don't have power plugged in when you do these because uh, it can obviously damage the machines. These I find, if the machines haven't been used for a while, can get a bit dusty in the connectors and can cause the machines not to boot up. So uh, they're nice machines. They're, you get really much more graphics performance than the indie, but uh, they're a little bit more finicky. Um, shipping from eBay and stuff like that is way more costly simply because their cases would be very fragile. Um, the CD-ROM drive, although useful when it works, does break, I find. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're definitely cool machines. I do like them, but they're a bit different. Um, so, this is not looking promising actually uh, could just be dusty this is a yes not sure that's working it's probably just need to reset the motherboard um, what I'll do is just try the 5000 model. Well, I have network this time. It's not turning itself on automatically, which is probably a good sign. Excellent. Uh, so yes, every SGI model has a different startup time. Still think the Indies is one of the best ones. Um, see if this hard drive works. So we're running, ah, oh, 6.3, bit of an interesting release. Nothing particularly special. Um, still prefer 6.5, uh, but interface wise, really not that different. Um, I think this one only has like 64 meg RAM, which is actually not as good as the Indie because it obviously shares some of that with the graphics card. So really, where possible, I'd recommend 128 meg of memory. Um, a lot of the O2s also just have two gigabyte hard drives. They're slow. Um, I think you can easily replace them with a you know, better, better hard disk and the performance will be a bit better. Um, I think it is working. So this particular monitor, um, quite old, but supports sync on green, so it may, means that it actually is in the right colour. Um, if you don't have sync on green, the whole screen has a green wash to it. it does work, just not very pleasant. It might be booting up slow because I've got the network in. That's possible. Um, yeah. I think this drive might actually work in this one. Oh, yep, yeah, here we go. So. Alright, 
this side. Okay, so R5000, one meg cache, 64 meg memory, so that's pretty poor, but whatever. Um, so, should be able to show you a couple of demos with some texturing if I have them. Unless this one doesn't have any demos. I'm not convinced this one actually has. There we go, demos. Blank demos. Well, that's fun. Alright, well, that's probably all I really will show you on this then um, because it's not that interesting. Yeah, I thought I may have had something installed on here that does not like it. Hmm. Alright, well, I mean, that's all for now. I might try and boot up, I might just try and reset the power motherboard in the R10,000 and then I might start back. So, a very quick overview. For, uh, for the O2s, an R5000 is really fine. Again, you can get 180 megahertz ones. Um, I would try and get 120 meg RAM, um, hard drives that work. Honestly, you can get like this particular one here has a really bad case. Um, I don't think you can actually see it, but a few of you, it's broken down here a bit, and this whole thing is cracked up here. Um, but the machine itself is completely functional, so if you don't really care so much about the look, then uh, you might be able to save a bit of money buying a, a slightly banged up one. Um, but I'm quite lucky I've got four quite nice uh, O2s, so uh, they all work when I, when I can get them working. Alright, um, I'm going to try and get this one working, and... Uh, See you guys soon.